Ah, redstone. Our favorite and most annoying thing in Minecraft. It's the lifeblood of all redstone contraptions and makes the game so much more unique than just regular Minecraft. But what is it exactly? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at here on this video. We're going to go over some basic features and uses of redstone. And if I skip over anything, it's just because I'm trying to keep it simple and I don't want to overcomplicate this video. So, what is redstone? Redstone is practically electrical lines that carry power from one place to another via this redstone dust. We can place it in a couple different ways. You can place it a single piece into this cross formation. If you click that, it goes into a circle and you can place it in a line and it will connect up and everything's grand. Redstone is powered in a couple different ways. We have our levers, which make it powered. We have pressure plates, which give power, buttons, which give power, and these are all conditional power sources. The lever can be flicked on and left on. However, the pressure plate will turn off if you get off of it. Items can be thrown on it and they'll despawn in five minutes and the power will go out and buttons just go out after a little bit. Redstone torches and redstone blocks both give off a constant power source and every single one of these gives off a power level of 15. As the redstone line goes away from the power source, it drops by one power level every block all the way down to zero, in which case it will not power a block. Redstone dust that travels over top of a block weakly powers the block itself, and a weakly powered block will power any redstone component placed next to it in any of its open faces. Redstone dust traveling into a solid block will not transmit the power out the other side via redstone dust because redstone dust has to be powered from a strong power source or a strongly powered block, which we will talk about in a minute. Redstone dust can travel up and over a block. It cannot, however, travel over a block that does not have a solid base, such as stairs or the bottom half of a slab and it can be cut off from a redstone line with another block. So if we power this, that gets powered there, but if we place a block, it cuts it off and it's no longer powered in this example. Transparent blocks with full faces, such as glass, can be used to transport a redstone signal vertically because even though it looks like it should disconnect the redstone line. It is a transparent block and therefore it does not disconnect the line and the power is able to flow freely upward to the redstone lamp. Moving on to talk a little bit about the redstone torch. Redstone torches will strongly power a block above them, which then in turn will power any redstone component placed around them. They will also power any redstone component placed adjacent to the torch itself as well as redstone dust. Because the block above it is strongly powered, we can, however, pull a redstone signal off of that via redstone dust. Redstone torches, like normal torches, can be placed on the side of a block, and it will not power the block itself or redstone dust on it, but we can power redstone components above the torch itself and to any of the sides. Redstone torches are unique in that they can be shut off with a redstone signal going into the block that they are placed on. This applies to the one on the side as well. And you can put the buttons directly on the blocks themselves. This also applies to the redstone torch itself. It can strongly power this block, which will in turn shut this torch off. Now this can be used for what is called a torch tower, which transmits power directly up via this torch line. And if we grab a button, we can shut the bottom one off and turn the top one on. This is useful in many circuits. Moving on, we're going to talk a little bit about the redstone repeater. Redstone repeaters 
receive power from the back of the repeater and transmit that power out the front with a little bit of delay. Standard repeater setting is one tick of delay, which is 0 0.05 seconds. We can move this up all the way to two, three, and four ticks of delay, which creates a little bit of a delay from when the repeater receives power in the back and when it outputs that power in the front. Another useful feature of the repeater is that it will boost any redstone signal back up to 15 no matter how strong the signal is coming in the back. Redstone repeaters can also pull output from a redstone line. They'll redirect the redstone into themselves and this is useful in a lot of different situations. Redstone repeaters can also strongly power a block in which case it will allow redstone dust to pull out the signal from the other side. Here we have two lines of five repeaters. These are all set to four ticks of delay. These are all on the standard setting of one tick of delay, and we can see the difference here. This allows for very, very specific timing in a lot of redstone contraptions. We learned about the dot of redstone at the beginning, but we didn't really talk about what it does. The useful thing about this dot of redstone is that it will receive power from a strongly powered block, but it will not transmit that power to the sides directly adjacent to it. So if we put a redstone lamp here, it will not power that lamp. However, if we click it and make it into the cross, it will because the redstone dust is actually traveling directly into it in this orientation. Over here, we can see that the block that the dot is on is powered and it will power blocks directly adjacent to the sandstone that the dot of redstone is on. Redstone signal cannot be transmitted through any transparent block like glass, leaves, fence, posts, slabs, and more, and can only be transmitted through solid blocks. Shifting gears once again, we're going to come take a look at the comparator. The comparator, like the repeater, will receive signal from the back and transmit that signal out the front. The difference is the comparator also has inputs on the sides here. One of the primary uses of a comparator is to read the contents of a container. In this case, we have a line of 15 lamps here, indicating that this chest is all the way full. Pull out one stack of redstone lamps, and we can see the last lamp shuts off. And we can keep doing this, and it will give an output according to the percentage of the chest that is full. All the way till we take them all out, and it will output zero redstone. Another interesting use of the comparator is reading lecterns and written books. So for example, we have a written book here with 15 pages and the redstone comparator will determine the redstone signal based on what page you are in the book. So if we turn this book to page one, it'll output a signal of one. We turn this to, let's say page eight, it'll output Eight power level. A comparator also has what is called the subtract mode. You right click on it and it will turn this front torch on like so. And this is useful for getting a very specific redstone signal that you need. So in subtract mode it will subtract whatever power level is coming in from the side from the power level coming in the back. So in this case we have a redstone block at the back which gives a signal of 15. In this situation, we have a signal strength of four coming out of this comparator in subtract mode, which means this signal strength over here has to be 11 because 11 from 15 equals four. So we take a look at the book and indeed we are on page 11. Now let's say we need a power level of nine. Well, if we just simply move this over to page six, six from 15, should give us nine. This is extremely useful 
for when you need a very specific power level. Moving on, we're going to talk a little bit about the observer. Now, the observer will see any block update in front of it and produce a redstone signal out the back via this little redstone dot. An observer, unlike any of the other redstone outputs, like a button or a lever, will give off a short burst of redstone. If I flip this trapdoor, you can see the lamp lights up for just a brief moment. This can be extremely useful in farms where you need to monitor the growth of a plant, i.e. sugarcane will send out a signal if it grows in front of the observer and can tell your machine to harvest the sugarcane. Or it can light up the light, letting you know that you can harvest it manually. Moving on, we're going to talk a little bit about the pistons. The piston can be placed in any orientation and it can move up to 13 blocks as long as they are movable blocks. Movable blocks include pistons, but a piston with an extended arm cannot be moved. Other blocks that cannot be moved are blocks like obsidian furnaces and most blocks that have a storage UI, such as droppers, hoppers, barrels, chests, and the like. The sticky piston, like its non-sticky counterpart, will move blocks, but instead of leaving the block where it is, it will bring the block back with the face of the piston. A sticky piston will not stick to another sticky piston, but you can steal a block from a sticky piston with another sticky piston. Sticky pistons can also be moved. And as with the other pistons, they cannot be moved if they're extended. The dropper is exactly like it says. It drops things. It receives a redstone signal, and it will drop one item out of the nine slots here at random. It can be placed in forward-facing, upward-facing, and downward-facing positions. The dispenser, like the dropper, will dispense or drop any item, just like that. But if the item is usable, such as a lava bucket, it will actually place the lava in the world, leaving the bucket behind, and it can be collected up like so. This applies to things like shears. You can shear sheep. It applies to water buckets, and most notably probably would be bone meal for use in certain farms. Last thing I want to talk about are hoppers. Hoppers are used to transport items, and they will suck up items that are thrown in the top of them, and they will store them in their UI here. However, if you have a hopper facing sideways, which is done by placing a block and placing a hopper into it, then that redirects the hopper into that way. As you can see over here, we have some chests and some hoppers, and all these hoppers are running directly into this bottom chest. A hopper with a block that has some sort of UI placed on top of it will not receive thrown items, but instead will suck items out of the chest or whatever and it will transmit those items through into the chest below. Hoppers are gravity fed which means you cannot transport items up with them only downwards or horizontally. One of the more notable things you can do with hoppers is create the automatic smelter. Hoppers underneath of a furnace will remove items from the output slot but not the fuel or the input slot. So if we grab some sandstone here and we fill this up, it will automatically start smelting and the hopper at the bottom will put the contents of the output slot into the chest. I hope this has been an informative look at some of the more simple components of redstone. And if you need to rewind this and watch something over again, feel free. 
and please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. Thank you. Have a good day.